Welcome to the channel viewers, Reverend Dr. J.W. Morrison. Coming to you live from Gosford, the Central Coast, New South Wales, Australia. Just check my equipment. Yes, we are live. Radio on. Connected to Central Coast Marine Rescue. And we're away. Thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoy the scenery. Just a reminder, these waters are shark infested. You cannot swim in these waters. Uh, I will be speaking on the subject of relationship sabotage. Relationship sabotage. Relationship sabotage can take form in diversible ways. <clears throat> Alcohol, drugs, other substances can contribute to the aggravation and disintegration of a person's interest in a relationship. Other forms are triangulation, outside interference, personal loss of interest in attraction, crisis, accidents, and death. One's not worse than the other. I think the hardest to take probably would be loss of attraction by the romantic partner. And this can manifest for many different reasons. Usually when we pedestalize the person and become an actor in their movie, as it were, where we are under the impression that these people or this person that we're in the relationship with is more important than what they are. It can come out of insecurity, uh, lack of self-worth, or just plain pedestalization of the person that we're with due to a lack of relationship training, as it were. Too often we pedestalize, or can tend to, may not always be the case, pedestalize our partner. On the other hand, we can neglect our partner and be um, disenfranchising and trying to find esteem in the relationship by pulling the person down, which isn't fair. And we shouldn't do that. Um, part of the reasons for this can be you can be contributing to the relationship with compliments and gifts which begin to be taken for granted. And if you keep doing it, you begin to lose attraction to that person because you're overdoing the compliments and the flattery to a point where it's not being appreciated anymore. This causes a lack of interest, a loss of interest, a loss of determination on the part of the person that you're with because they're now under the impression or building the impression that no matter what they do, you're going to love them regardless. And this can lead them into a grandiose state, an egocentric state, where they're now being deceived by their ego and believing that 
there are greater opportunities far and wide outside the relationship because you pedestalize them to believe that. Now, I believe in contributing to telling someone how much you love them and growing the relationship in a healthy way by getting flowers here and there. But even that can be taken for granted um, and received the wrong way. And you have to be very careful on your timing of these things so that when you do execute compliments, edification, and sincere expressions of love towards that person, they are in a mindset where they're able to understand and appreciate the value that you have for them and the heart and spirit in which you're trying to express that to them to give them a sense of security rather than an ego and a sense of appreciation then there's parts where you can be putting yourself into the life of someone and you'll have outside interference working against you <clears throat> out of envy, jealousy fear of loss of that person insecurities and fear of loss of financial support and supply <coughs> excuse me <clears throat> and uh, fear of emotional supply as well. This will usually come from a family member and later if the person's inclined not to be able to resolve from outside sources such as friends, exes and possibly new love interests. People don't have the resilience and the fortitude anymore to work out ways of resolve. They've usually given the authority of their lives over to people that shouldn't have it or their beliefs and concepts are wrong and skewed and they deceive themselves into thinking that their ways of resolve are effective only to find out sooner rather than later that their decision making and ways in which they deal with things are not effective and they lose their relationship. This may not be detrimental to a lot of people, but most people do suffer mind trauma. They won't admit it. At the point of breakup, even if they plan the breakup, there will be trauma. There'll be some kind of mental and psychological harm done because we're not designed to split up unless it's for the right reasons like narcissism, hostility, abuse, uh, verbal, mental, physical, sexual, and or cheating, affairs, emotional affairs, physical affairs, and this kind of destructive behavior. It doesn't help anybody. Relationships go deep inside our heart and mind as we become more intimate and more close. The personality and characteristic and soul and spirit emotional transitions of ourself into that per person and of that person into ourselves and the mixture of those two beings together inside each person can produce reason for change.
the chemistry created, the psychological and spiritual chemistry created from these exchanges don't always work out the way that we would like. The potency, the product that comes out of that in our mind is not always of the flavour that we would like. And as the relationship goes on and this becomes more potent, this is another way in which attraction can die. Some people just want to turn up for the sex, thinking that by some strange reason they won't get better anywhere else. But nine times out of ten that's not the case because sex is sex and the experience is the experience and the relationship should be going way beyond that. That's just a small part of the bigger picture in the health, welfare and duty of care of the relationship. I've had these people turn up to have relationships with me and there's so much unresolved, I'm wondering what they're even doing there. They're completely self unaware, they know what the problem is, they know what they need to do, but their value to do it, their desire to do it is just not there. There's influences that are more important relative to the unresolved. That the person that you're with is willing to risk the jettison of the relationship or the loss of the relationship or the demise of the relationship for the dysfunction of the unresolved. A lot of the time these people are enabling hostile narcissistic people that are out for themselves, usually family members. <clears throat> and the aggravation of this is second to none because it ambushes, vandalizes and ruins the positivity in the relationship. Sex will not be able to undo it unless you're some kind of nitwit, some kind of possibly sexual deviant or something's got to be wrong somewhere because sex isn't enough. Um, uh, shouldn't have enough influence over you to ignore the problems. It's like you're flying a car, or flying a plane, or driving a car. Say, let's go with the plane, and one engine's blown, and this is going to have a very serious detrimental effect on the plane and the flight. Possibly could cause a crash, and you decide to have sex with one of the crew, female attendants. It's not going to fix the problem and this is what I mean and you can see what I mean. You're in a car, the brakes are gone, and you decide to have sex with the passenger. That is not going to fix the brake problem. And a lot of people unfortunately think their assets Sexual assets are going to be enough to blind some body or their partner from what needs to be fixed. And then, of course, in this delusion or in this mindset or in this way of life, which is very shallow and very incomplete, the relationship gets annulled because unresolved wasn't sought. And again, this is a common occurrence. A lot of people are sex orientated, sexually focused, and sexually deviant and desperate enough to risk their relationship and the sex that comes with that by not meeting, metering out result. When they very easily could have done that without any detriment to themselves or anybody else. Some people, by nature of their sinful nature, as the Bible describes it, just cannot find the antidote to their problems. 
this sand affects their relationships and they go from one person to the next, they actually become accustomed to it till it all becomes too much, they get tired of being ran through, pumped and dumped and made to feel of no value on top of the worthlessness that they already feel because that's what unresolved does, it makes you feel worthless because you make yourself worthless when you can't fix things you are actually making yourself worthless you can't, you've reached your, your pinnacle if you're not prepared to fix something that's fixable that's your limit That's as far as you can go. <coughs> Excuse me. And therefore, the relationship is lost. It's easy to just go, well, I lost my relationship, but what's not easy is going through the breakup and the pain that comes with that. Sometimes a breakup is the reality check that we needed for all its loss and pain and trauma and problems and hurt and tears and sleepless nights and wondering and pondering. A breakup could be the decisive moment in our life. It could be the moment where the light comes on and we realize we're getting older, we're getting tireder, we're getting sicker, our ailments are creeping, creeping up on us the way in which I'm managing family members and children just may not necessarily be right. And as a consequence to that, fire reflection and desperation, the breakup could be exactly the switch that turns on the light to help somebody change their life. They may not thank you at the time, as a matter of fact, they may hate you and even want to kill you at the time. Or at least won't never talk to you again. But later, as things cool down and we've had time to think, time to reflect, time to reason, time to try and understand, time to be real about the situation, our conclusions can become much clearer and much fairer relative to the entirety of the breakup. The, the, the whole circumstances connected to the breakup. And this, in turn, could be the turning point for somebody's life. They could have bondages and things in their life that they've been unable to change. And if there is wind, I do apologise. We're going into the wind now. There is a slight sea breeze. <sighs> Probably about five to six knots, maybe four to six knots. The breakup could cause such devastation that at that point in the person's life it could flick a switch that causes them to desperately want to change for good. They've realised, the lights come on, that the way in which they live is not working for them. It doesn't work. It doesn't pr produce 
the fruit in their life, health, health wise, emotionally wise, romantically wise, that they need to have that may help them to realize that the substance abuse, the alcohol abuse, or if they've got medication abuse or other abuses, that it's time to let some things go so they seriously rehabilitate. Pain and loss can be the biggest tutors that we could have. And pain and loss can often shock us into making decisions that are best for us that we otherwise would not make. Now this is not the reason why you should break up, but it can be a result of a breakup. Stubbornness and arrogance, sarcasm and conceitedness and all these things can stop us from seeing what we need to do to help ourselves and these psychological negligences that we hold towards ourselves can be broken via loss something that's been valuable to us that we've lost by way of negligence and coming to the point where we've realized yes I lost that because of my late negligence can bring about a deep personal desire a spirit of repentance that's a, a willingness to want to turn away from what's causing the problems in a totally new direction for life where that person wants to change and improve. The other thing could be though, however, that at the time of the breakup, the resentment and the bitterness could harden the heart even further. The person could decide to push into their habits even deeper. And in this case, the shadows and the darkness overtakes them even more and they spiral towards death in a state of unresolved. Unresolved with themselves, unresolved with the people around them, living a fantasy life within the tribe, thinking everything's all right, but it's only to reassure each other that the supply will be there if it's alcohol or drugs or all of it and that the answer is in their unity whether they're right or wrong or otherwise and this is where a lot of families come undone because they don't seek outside counsel and they deceive themselves for decades into thinking that the path that they're on is right but it's actually their mindsets and thinking and way of life that's bringing them undone. Captain, another day, another dollar? Yeah, you betcha. That's it. See you on the next one. And it's sad because people do run out of time. As I mentioned at the start of the talk, <sighs> accidents can happen. Um, fatalities can take place. And the matters of resolve are not to be postponed. If we know we re need to resolve something, we really should. If you're on alcohol, drugs, substances, medications, possibly even a serial masturbator, just looking at it from another angle, you really do need to 
work out a way in which you can change that in your life because these things rob you usually in the area of your relationship personal intimate relationship there's Christian way of life if you get it right it helps if you get it wrong it doesn't help at all it only makes things worse as a matter of fact if you get the Bible wrong which isn't uncommon so you need to take that very seriously as well we're surrounded by religious people that haven't got a clue of what's going on in the Bible but they'll quote it and say they're living by it but they're not and God will sort that out his way relationships really do make a difference they make a difference for good or they make a difference for bad and it comes down to our value and interest in being the best that we can within the relationship for ourselves and the other person so that we can have power flowing from our union the great fruits of the spirit of love joy peace long suffering kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness and self-control will help forgiveness is another one transparency communication and the like but it's a day-by-day -day development within ourselves in our walk with ourselves, our walk with God, and the walk with the person that we're with to protect, sustain, maintain, and bring healing to and power from God into our life and their life. Because remember, the golden rule is to love your neighbor as yourself. And if you have issues with yourself, and the sign could be that you are on alcohol, drugs, medications, recreational drugs, or possibly reckless and careless sex. Your first step might be to have a look in the mirror, get on the phone, ring up a professional and seek some counsel or therapy. Someone that you can trust that's not biased in their judgment and begin the journey to wholeness. It's one decision away. You're with Reverend Dr. J.W. Morrison, Theologist. I will end this video now. We are in the wind. It could be upsetting the transmission. My voice. I do hope this has given you something to think about. Something positive for you to consider for your life. Something you might be able to share with somebody else. Remember, exercise is important, good diet, and those kind of things always help. If you haven't already, please subscribe and like. I do go to a lot of effort to make these videos. And thank you for joining me. Let the wicked forsake their way the unrighteous person their thoughts and let them return to the Lord and to our God and he will abundantly pardon you. This is Reverend Dr. J.W. Morrison. I'll speak to you again soon. Bye for now.